today we will be talking all about the benefits of exercise. We'll be discussing why should you exercise? What kinds of exercises should you be doing? As well as what are your goals moving forward? We'll start with why should you exercise? Well, the benefits of doing regular aerobic exercise are that it can strengthen your cardiovascular and respiratory systems, as well as strengthen bones and muscles, help with weight, diabetes, pain, and stress management, as well as help with depression and anxiety symptoms, and reduce your risk of certain types of cancer. When it comes to exercise prescription, the main thing you want to think about is what's called the FIT principle. FIT stands for frequency, intensity, time, and type. So in regards to aerobic exercise, the frequency would be about five days per week. Intensity would be about an 11 to 13, which would be exercise activities that feel fairly light to somewhat hard for you to complete. Um, time, the goal is to work your way between 30 to 60 minutes of aerobic exercise at one time. But for a lot of people, especially when you're just getting started with exercise, 30 minutes can seem like quite a lot of exercise all at one time. So you might find it beneficial to break down your exercise sessions over maybe two or three sessions throughout the day. So instead of exercising for 30 minutes all at one time, Maybe you want to divide that into a walk for 15 minutes in the morning and then maybe another 15 minute walk in the evening. Maybe exercising for two, three or five minutes throughout the day to a total of 30 minutes of exercise for the day might be a better option. The type of exercise, like I said, this is aerobic exercise. It's also called endurance or cardio. Um, the big thing is when it comes to aerobic exercise, pick activities you like and you can tolerate. Aerobic exercise examples include things like walking, jogging, biking, swimming, dancing, climbing stairs. It's any activity that gets both your breathing rate and your heart rate elevated. When it comes to measuring exercise intensity, there's a few different ways we can do that. One would be heart rate. So whether you're using your Fitbit or Garmin or some sort of other smart watch or even a heart rate monitor. The other option would be to actually manually check your heart rate so you can palpitate for your pulse at either your wrist or your carotid and count the number of times that you feel your pulse going through over a six second time period. And whatever number you get from there, multiply that by 10. So typically with exercise, you will have a resting heart rate before you do exercise. And then with your exercise, you should expect there to be an increase in your heart rate. Another way to measure exercise intensity would be to use the talk test. So if while you're completing cardio exercise, if you can sing a song without pausing to take a breath, that would be considered light intensity. Um, moderate intensity would be, you can say, maybe a seven to eight word sentence without pausing to take a breath. And then vigorous intensity, you would probably be able to get out two to three words without having to take a breath. So typically we want you to work kind of in that moderate intensity range when it comes to aerobic exercise. It is important to know that the benefits of exercise are not immediate and it can get kind of frustrating. It actually can take about three months of regular exercise, meaning five days per week of that moderate intensity exercise to really start to see some of the benefits we discussed in the previous slides. So please do not let this discourage you. Keep doing what you're doing. The benefits will present themselves. What is a MET? So MET stands for metabolic equivalent. It's a useful way to describe your intensity level of various activities. So one MET is equal to the energy burned at rest. Activities can also be determined by their MET level. So light intensity would be activities less than three METs. Moderate would be 
activities between three and six METs, and vigorous intensity activities would be greater than six METs. This is a table of common physical activities and their categorized MET level. So things like walking slowly would be considered light intensity, um, household chores, so making a bed, washing dishes, that would be light intensity as well. Arts and crafts, playing a musical instrument, uh, leisurely sports like fishing and darts would all be considered light intensity. Moderate intensity would be uh, walking three to four miles per hour. Uh, chores like washing the windows, sweeping floors, vacuuming, ballroom dancing, as well as sports like badminton, golf, non-competitive volleyball. Vigorous intensity activities would be things like walking or hiking at a brisk pace so around 4.5 miles per hour. Household chores like shoveling, baling hay, carrying heavy loads, and sports like cycling and tennis singles and competitive volleyball. The benefits of regular aerobic exercise on the cardiovascular system includes an increase in what's called stroke volume, which this is the amount of blood pumped out of the heart with each beat. This is the blood that's delivering oxygen and nutrients to the rest of your body. Regular aerobic exercise also decreases our resting heart rate, which decreases the workload on our heart. So overall, a stronger heart can actually pump blood with less effort. So this decreased workload on the heart actually leads to lower pressure exerted on our artery walls, which leads to a lower blood pressure value. Some people find that with regular aerobic exercise, you can actually reduce the amount of blood pressure medications you're on, or maybe change the type, or even completely discontinue blood pressure medicines because of this uh, therapeutic effect on blood pressure with aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise and cholesterol. So when it comes to aerobic exercise, it lowers the buildup of plaque in our arteries by increasing our good cholesterol. Uh, there is little to no effect on our bad cholesterol linked to regular aerobic exercise training. When it comes to aerobic exercise and weight management, it's important to keep in mind that exercise is going to help us burn more calories than we're consumed which can reduce body fats, help with a healthier body composition, and improve our sense of self-esteem. Regular exercise can also reduce our risk for obesity and helps decrease the pressure on our bones and joints. When it comes to aerobic exercise, there is this post exercise window where about two to three hours after exercise you're burning more calories during that two to three hour window than what you would have been doing if you didn't exercise in the first place. So that's really an increase in overall metabolism which will help with weight management. It's also important to know that with weight management resistance training is a extremely important component because it helps with our muscle mass. Aerobic exercise and cancer reduction. So we found that being sedentary is a risk factor to certain types of cancer, especially breast cancer and colon cancer. The mechanism by which physical activity decreases our cancer risk is very complex and not very well understood at this time. Regular aerobic exercise can lower our risk of both breast and uterine cancers by decreasing a production of estrogen which estrogen is what can support certain types of cancer growth. There is a dose response relationship between the amount of physical activity and breast cancer risk. So as time and intensity increases for exercise, it decreases our risk of breast cancer. And then physical activity reduces the risk of colon cancer by about 24% in both men and women.
In regards to exercise and diabetes, regular exercise and a healthy diet can either prevent or manage type 2 diabetes because it increases our insulin sensitivity, allowing muscles to use that blood sugar for energy, which would lead into a reduction in blood sugar post-exercise. In regards to type 1 diabetes, regular exercise is a safe and effective adjunct therapy for that blood sugar management. With aerobic exercise and stress management, we first want to define stress, which is your body's natural response to a mental, emotional, or physical situation that requires a change or reaction. Chronic unmanaged stress can actually put you at increased risk for a heart event, but managed and properly utilized stress can actually keep your health risk low. It's important to note that you cannot eliminate stress but you can eliminate your response, or but you can change how you respond to stress. Exercise has been shown to improve stress management, feelings of well-being, self-esteem, and muscular tension. Next, we're going to talk about why should you lift weights. Regular resistance training increases both our muscular strength and endurance and they have found that a higher level of muscular fitness is actually linked to fewer heart disease events and a lower risk of mortality. Regular resistance training can cause an increase in muscle mass which is important because as we get older we do undergo two phases of muscle loss so between the ages of 25 and 50 you lose about 10 percent of your muscle mass and between the ages of 50 and 85, you lose about 40%. So there's nothing we can necessarily do about the fact that this muscle loss occurs. But what we can control with regular resistance training is decrease the rate at which this muscle deterioration is occurring. Resistance training can help with both our balance and coordination, as well as insulin sensitivity to help with blood sugar control. Resistance training can also prevent osteoporosis, as well as increasing what's called our basal metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories our body burns just doing our everyday functions like digesting food and breathing air in and out. Resistance training can also help improve blood pressure control, as well as our resting heart rate and our stroke volume. Resistance training exercise prescription. Frequency, you want to lift weights two to three days per week. Intensity, it's any weight that you can lift safely for about 10 to 15 repetitions over one to four sets. So you truly want to feel like that 10th or 15th repetition, you could not lift that weight one more time with good form. In time, no specific time duration has shown more effective than others, but it is important to have a rest period, maybe about two to three minutes between sets, just to help um, give that muscle some time to recover before you stress it again with that resistance training. When it comes to type, it's exercises involving each major muscle group. Examples of resistance Training include chair exercises, lifting free weights. You can use weight machines or resistance bands or weighted exercise balls or even body weight for things like wall push-ups or squats or modified lunges. Next, we're going to talk about stretching and why should you stretch. Regular stretching improves our range of motion, which helps prevent things like lower back pain, improves posture, prevents muscle and tendon injury, and decreases muscle soreness. So frequency, at minimum, you want to make sure you're stretching about two to three days per week. Daily is preferred. Intensity, you want to stretch to the point of tightness, not pain. So if when you're stretching, you feel really uncomfortable or it is painful, you want to kind of dial that stretching range of motion in just a little bit to a more comfortable level. Time, you want to hold that stretch for about 10 to 30 seconds for a total target stretch time of about 60 seconds per exercise. Type, you can pick static 
or dynamic stretches for each major muscle group. A lot of times people find that using more dynamic stretches, so stretches that involve movement before an exercise routine is beneficial to kind of help prepare the body for exercise. And more of that static, so stationary stretching might be more preferred for that cool down post-exercise. An exercise session typically consists of maybe a warm up about three to five minutes, followed by some stretching and aerobic exercise. So, again, the recommendation is five days, 30 minutes of aerobic exercise. Two to three days per week, you want to make sure you're including your strength training. So, whether that's your free weights, your body weight, your weight machines, you want to include a cool cool down to get that heart rate back down to baseline, as well as another stretching session just to help prevent some muscle soreness. When it comes to exercise progression, our bodies are very smart. So over time, we get stronger. And it might be that our 30 minutes on the bike seems like it was an unimaginable goal to attain. But maybe over time, you've gradually increased the amount of pedaling you're doing. And 30 minutes is easy peasy. So maybe we want to work on progressing that exercise just to make it a little bit more challenging. So typically when you start an activity, you've got that initiation, you have that initiation stage, which is that first stage of training to allow muscles and our cardiorespiratory systems to adapt to the activity. So this is when you're first starting with your 30 minutes pedaling on the bike. So it might be a lower intensity level. Um, you might need to start with 10 minutes of exercise at a time. This initiation stage is typically about four weeks. Uh, after the initiation stage is the improvement stage. So this is uh, typically weeks five through maybe six months of training. So what you do is you increase the frequency. So how often you're exercising or the intensity. So maybe you are pedaling around 60 revolutions per minute and now you're bumping it up to 75 revolutions per minute. Or maybe you're increasing your duration. So maybe you did the 10 minutes of continuous exercise. So maybe now we're doing 15 minutes or 20 minutes of continuous exercise. The third stage of exercise progression is our maintenance stage. So this is long-term maintenance of our cardio and re respiratory fitness. It's typically from month six and up. So at this time, people find that it might be beneficial to change what mode of exercise you are doing. So if you were continuously on the bike, maybe switching to something like the elliptical or swimming or new step can make uh, regular exercise both enjoyable, prevent boredom, and reduce the risk of overuse injuries. This is an exercise prescription example for aerobic exercise over those three different stage periods. So at first, maybe you're exercising five days at a lower intensity level. So that's less than three mets, or it feels like a fairly light workload for you. And maybe you're doing 10 to 30 minutes. And this could be anything like a new step or walking biking, dancing, or rowing. Again, this is aerobic exercise, so it's helping increase our breathing rate and our heart rate. After the initiation stage, we're gonna move on to our improvement stage. So it's still five days per week of aerobic exercise at that low to moderate intensity level. So maybe it feels like an 11 to 13, a fairly light to somewhat hard workload for you. Time-wise, it's still gonna be about 10 minutes up to no more than 60 minutes. And you can still be doing things like our new step, walking, biking, dancing, or rowing. The next stage would be maintenance. So with maintenance, we're still exercising five days per week. Maybe we're keeping at more of a moderate intensity level, so somewhat hard. A time duration of 10 to 60 minutes. And you maybe you want to try multiple different types of aerobic exercise. So maybe you want to do 20 minutes on this new step and 20 minutes walking and then maybe another 20 minutes on this bike. When it comes to exercise prescription with, excuse me, when it comes to exercise progression with resistance training, our muscles do adapt over time to that regular resistance training. So we need to work on progressively overloading the muscles to continue seeing further strength and muscle mass gain. 
So there are a couple options in regards to progressive overload. So you can increase the amount of weight you're lifting during training. So maybe you went from five pounds to seven pounds. Or you can increase the number of sets performed. So maybe you were doing two sets of an exercise and now you're going to do three. The other option for progressive overload is increasing the frequency of resistance exercises. So maybe you were lifting weights two days per week. So maybe we work our way up to exercising with weights three days a week. It is important to kind of keep in mind only one of those variables should be increased at a time. So whether it's you're increasing the weight or the number of sets or how often you're actually completing resistance training. Again, one variable at a time. There are quite a few exercise options uh, for our OSF patient population. So uh, with OSF St. Francis Medical Center at the Riverplex, we do have what's called medical rehab. It's a non-monitored exercise program that includes getting resting vitals like blood pressure and heart rate taken and inputted into your monitored account. Uh, that team includes exercise physiologists and nurses. There's a whole schedule of various fitness classes you can choose to partake in, or maybe you want to get your vitals, but exercise on your own, on your own piece of equipment, that's fine as well. The other program besides medical rehab at the Riverplex would be Silver Sneakers, uh, which is very similar, but with Silver Sneakers, your health insurance covers the cost of your gym membership. Some people find that the most beneficial way to get in regular exercise training would be home exercise. So you can buy equipment if you don't have it and you would like to. Even used equipment is fine. So whether it's, you know, you want maybe a lighter pair of hand weights and maybe a heavier pair of hand weights or some resistance bands. Or even if you're using things like empty milk jugs for hand weights or putting rice or beans into a Ziploc bag and using those as makeshift weights. Some people find that exercising at home is not quite as motivating, so maybe they do need to get a gym membership. But things you do want to consider when getting a gym membership would be such as cost, if it's affordable to you, as well as location. So you want to make sure it's typically within about 15 minutes or so of home, just to make sure you utilize it regularly. And you want to keep in mind um, that the staff at whatever gym you're exercising in, are they CPR certified? Um, and would they be able to assist if there were a medical emergency while you were at the gym? These are some tips to stay motivated. One. Remind yourself of the many benefits. Two, you can reward yourself. A lot of times bribery goes a long way. Or even keeping an exercise log so you can gradually kind of look back in the past and see what progress you've made. It can be really motivating. You can exercise with a friend or group, so make it more of a social situation. Or watch TV or listen to music. Uh, some people find just changing up your routine can help make things uh, seem a little bit fresher and newer and more exciting. So if you're normally one of those people that exercises at like 5 or 6 a.m., uh, maybe come in a little bit later in the morning. So maybe come in at like 8 or 9 and see some new faces here at the Riverplex or wherever you exercise. Some people find that technology to track progress can help a lot. So whether it's like a Fitbit or a Garmin smartwatch or even a pedometer, just keeping an eye on the number of steps you're doing. Um, the big thing when it comes to staying motivated, though, is you have to set exercise goals. It's important to kind of have a game plan or something you are working towards. I would say at minimum, all of us should have at least the one goal of completing five days, 30 minutes of aerobic exercise each week. So that would be that 150 minutes of aerobic exercise total because it's going to help keep us healthier. It's going to help with our heart and lung health, our muscle strength, to help with weight control, blood sugar control, all of that good stuff. Some things you want to keep in mind with weather. So if it's hot, don't exercise. If both the temperature and humidity, you add those numbers up and it exceeds 160 degrees. You want to make sure you're exercising indoors at that time. 
um, or maybe wait until it's a little bit cooler in the day to exercise outside, as well as making sure that you decrease your time and intensity of exercise during heat waves, as well as make sure that you're staying plenty hydrated with non-caffeinated fluids and keeping an eye out for signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion or heat stroke. In regards to cold weather, we typically don't want you exercising um, if the temperature or wind chill are below freezing, um, especially if you are not appropriately dressed for that weather. Some key notes. Exercise truly can be fun, but you have to pick activities you truly enjoy, and that could be kind of a fluid idea. So maybe one month you really, really like a group fitness and group aerobic classes. And then maybe the next month you're like, I, I don't really wanna go to a fitness class anymore. Well, maybe pick up some swimming or maybe some biking, something else. Uh, make the most of your time. So if you only have two minutes or five minutes or 10 minute little increments of time, make sure you're using the most of your time to get in a little bit of walking or maybe even a little bit of free weights real quick. And it is important to know it's never too late to start exercising regularly. You don't have to be that person that's always saying, ah, on Monday, I'm going to get started. On Monday, to start exercising regularly. So stop waiting for every single Monday to help make some of these healthy behavior changes by including exercise in your everyday life. Thank you.